Hey Ragstars, I'm Diego and in this tutorial I will show you how to visualize your end devices data in ThingsBoard with HTTP integrations via Wizgate Edge v2 built-in network server. First, log into your ThingsBoard account. If you do not have an account yet, you must create one. You can find the link in the video description. You will see the ThingsBoard overview page once logged in. After logging in, you will need a data converter for the uplinks. To create one, head to the Data Converters menu. To add a data converter, click on the Add Data Converter icon plus button and choose Create New Converter. In the Name field, type a name for the decoder, for example, Uplink Decoder. Enable the Debug mode to track events while configuring the integration. Leave the type as Uplink. You can use the default decoder code provided by ThingsBoard. Click on Add to add the uplink decoder. Now that the uplink data converter is ready, you can proceed to add the HTTP integration. Click on the integration menu on the left, below data converters. Click on the add integration plus button to add one. For integration type, choose HTTP. In the name field, give a name to the integration, for example, HTTP integration, and click next. In the uplink data converter, Choose the decoder you created earlier and click Next. Skip by downlink converter by clicking Skip. While on the connection step, copy the HTTP endpoint URL somewhere as it will be used later to set up the connection. Click on Add to add the integration. Now that the Things board is configured, you need to configure the gateway, add the application, register the end device and set the integration. Start by accessing the gateway. Once logged in, Head to the LoRa menu. By default, the gateway works as a built-in network server. Go to the Applications tab. Click on the Add Application button or Add One Now link to add a new application. On the new page, fill in the following information. Application name, a type of name for the application, application description. You have the option to write a description of the application. Application type. From the drop-down menu, select the type of application you can choose between Unified Application Key, where all the devices will use the same application key, and Separate Application Keys, where each device will have its own application key. In this example, we would choose the Unified Application Key. You can choose which option fits you best. Selecting the Unified Key option pops up an Application Key field and an Auto Add Device button. You can type your application key in the Application Key field or use the Auto Generate button to generate one. In this example, we will enable the Auto Add Device feature. The switch pops up an Application EUI field. The device will be automatically added to the application after Application EUI and Key Verification. Payload Type From the drop-down, select Cayan LPP as the payload type and turn on the Only Forward Data Object feature. Once this is set, click on Save Application to add the application. Now, configure the device to join the network server. You can find a link on how to configure the WISBLOCK kit in the video description. The device will automatically register upon a join request. You can check the registered device in the End Devices tab. After your device joins, head to LoRa Network, then Applications. Then select your application, Configuration, Integration Parameters. Turn on the integration by clicking the Enable HTTP Integration switch. This will pop up the HTTP Integration field settings. In the Uplink Data Join Notification ACK Notification Device Status Notification URLs field, Paste the endpoint URL copied above. Take note that you should remove the S from the HTTPS link. If you want to see only the uplink messages, you can place the endpoint URL only in the uplink data field. Click Save and Apply to save the changes. Now you can see the uplink messages in the event log. In this example, as we mentioned before, we are using the WISBLOCK Kit 4 Indoor Environment Monitor. The method to visualize the data for other devices is the same. 
After creating the data converter integration and getting some data in the events tab, this automatically creates a device in the default device group based on the decoder. Head to the device group menu. By default in the device groups menu, you will find only one group named door. Click on the name to open the group. Here you can find the created device. If you click on the device and head to the attributes tab, you will see the data from the node. To visualize the data, simply click on the desired value you want to visualize and click on the show on widget button. In this example, we will be using the temperature. On the next page, from current bundle drop down menu, choose the desired widget for the data. We will be using analog gauges as the analog gauges has the widget for the temperature. After choosing the widget, click on add to dashboard. By default, the profile does not have a dashboard. You will need to create a new one. Choose Create New Dashboard and type a name for the dashboard in the New Dashboard Title field. For example, the WISBLOCK kit. In that dashboard, you can add more widgets for the device. When you set the name for the dashboard, click on the Add button to add the widget. Alternatively, you can check the Open Dashboard option. This will automatically open the created dashboard after the widget is added. If you have not checked the Open Dashboard option, you can easily navigate to the Dashboard Groups menu or name of your group. You can do these steps for the other data on the device. The only difference is that when adding a widget, click on Select Existing Dashboard and select the already created dashboard. In this case, the WISBLOCK kit. We hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you want more of this, Comment down below and stay tuned.